I already thought I'd try something a little different. Uh, I've never done one of these before. I'm going to do an unboxing, except it's an unbagging. And yes, I bought this from the Evil Empire, so apologies ahead of time. So, I've only recently heard about this, and I thought I would give it a, a look. Uh, I don't know a great deal about it, and I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it. But it's, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce this terribly, uh, Beit Alazif. Um, you can look at it already. It's a, you know, it's from the Evil Empire, so the corner's a little dinged up. But it was inexpensive, so I'm not going to be too stressed out about that. Um, this is a very cool image on the front cover. Uh, that's very cool. So this is, uh, at, at, it lists itself here as a uh, magazine for the Cthulhu Mythos role-playing game. Uh, for Cthulhu Mythos role-playing games. I can't read, apparently. And this is issue one, uh, $10. It's a good price. Um, and I believe this uh, has typically has stats for both Call of Cthulhu and for uh, Trail of Cthulhu, which I thought was interesting. But I guess it covers just any kind of Lovecraftian uh, RPG stuff. Um, let's see. So we've got table of contents. I know there's a uh, there's a couple of adventures in here. I think there's three adventures in here. Uh, there's some very cool artwork in this. Uh, Cthulhu Review 2017. So we go through and see. Uh, looks like nonfiction. There's nonfiction articles about. Uh, well, this looks like it's about different kinds of. Cthulhu role-playing games, I guess. Uh, looking back over 2017, had a lot of things that happened in the Cthulhu game world. Well, that's cool. Okay. Uh, that'll help me because, honestly, I am not particularly in the know about these sorts of things. So um, it'll be nice to read over that and see what was going on in 2017. And I suppose that the um, following issues will cover similar things to help me sort of know what's been going on. Uh, covers different companies that have been doing stuff, obviously Chaosium, but I also see Cubicle 7, um, 60 Stone Press, I don't know them, hmm. but, uh, oh yeah, Delta Green RPG, um, I absolutely loved the 90s Delta Green, I haven't picked up the new version, I did pick up uh, Fall of Delta Green, uh, but I haven't even... I haven't even skimmed it, honestly. I bought it at uh, during Free Comic Book Day a couple of years ago, knowing that I would be interested in it, and then I put it on my shelf, and I haven't really gotten to it. Um, sorry. Uh, a conspiracy in Damascus. Damascus, I can speak. Eighth century scenario. Uh, that's nice. So one of the things I would like to try out at some point is to run um, some... Dark Ages Cthulhu. I think that could be a great deal of fun. Uh, I remember trying to put a little bit of a mythos twist, uh, a little bit, uh, on an Ars Magica game that I ran a long time ago, but I don't feel that it necessarily fits so much in Ars Magica, but uh, um, still, I like that sort of mix of medieval and uh, uh, cosmic horror. I think that could be really neat, especially in a time when people are so into religions to have that underpinning of a, of a carefree universe. Um, let's see. Also, I've been thinking, too, because Horror on the Orient Express has some, you know, flashback types of um, scenarios where you go to different time periods. I thought it would be neat, and I don't know if this would work, but I thought it would be neat to do something like that if I ever do get around to running Masks of Night Laser Tap is, is see if maybe there's some kind of early stage scenario that I could run. Um, so we'll keep flipping through here. Uh, I like the uh, maps and art, some photography. Um, very cool. Actually, quite a bit to this one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, all right. I'm there for. I'm there for all of that. Uh, Okay, yeah, we have a, a a review. It looks like of a of a an old supplement. Um, I think I have a different edition of Arkham Unveiled than this. Uh, Sites of Antiquity, nice. 
uh, you know, locations, real world locations. I, I don't know if this is a real world location, probably it is, uh, but locations are always nice to have. Uh, rebooting campaigns with a modern sensibility. Hmm, that'd be interesting. I, I love this photo. Uh, I don't remember if that's Louise Brooks or um, one of the other flapper actresses, but I had uh, uh, definitely snagged this photo to use as a, a character portrait in a game before. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, all right, all right. Oh, man. Mentions Mask of the Tap just in the opening paragraph, and boy, I tell you what, I really want to check that out. Uh, I see talk about Eternal Lies, which I've ordered, but I'm still waiting for Tatters of the King, which is one that I'm interested in. Uh, I don't know what this article's about, but uh, I'll definitely be reading through that. Uh, Double Dare, a modern scenario. I think this is the one where you play kids getting into trouble. That could be interesting. Um, I had, when I ran the uh, the Haunting a long time ago, uh, the PCs were all uh, brought together by being in an airplane that crashed in the woods of Maine. That was how I started the scenario up. I had moved things around, obviously. Um, and uh, one of the players uh, got stuck playing a child character. And it was, it was kind of fun... Um, I think he enjoyed himself uh, playing, the, you know, the, the sort of kid that gets into trouble. And I enjoyed having all the other players trying desperately to keep the child uh, from getting horribly destroyed. Uh, I don't remember what actually turned out. I feel like it did survive the scenario, but, uh, you know, I can't. I don't know. It's been 20 years. Let's see. Uh, oh. Looks like a bunch of stuff that can be used for handouts, you know. Don't play Call of Cthulhu if you don't like handouts. Clerical Cosmic Horror, a brief era of the Cthulhu mythos as Dungeons and Dragons Pantheon. Her? Hmm. Okay. I don't know if this is in reference to the old um, Deities and Demigods book when they had that in there. Yeah, it looks like maybe it is. Yeah, Deities and Demigods. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, you know, that was always a little bit weird. Um, another vintage RPG review. Cool. Escape from Innsmouth, I definitely do have, but I have a different edition than this. Um, that's another kind of tempting one. It's like not what I'm really in the mood to try right now. I kind of want to do a little bit of a globe hopping campaign. But, uh, you know, Innsmouth is always kind of a neat one. And I, I think that it, it could be really interesting to do a generational campaign where you do scenarios that lead up to the raid at Innsmouth, but then you continue on afterwards with the founding of Delta Green and kind of doing a through line through that. I think that could be really neat. Um, you know, I, it's not something that I'm set to do at this time, but I think that could be a really cool way to, to do things. Uh, let's see. Ah, solo scenario. Nice. Uh, I've been kind of interested in trying more of these. I think uh, pandemic life being what it is, uh, I've been thinking about doing some solo uh, games. I've done a little bit, but I'd, I'd kind of like to do some more, so having a few more options is, is nice, having a few more examples. I think uh, I found one that I had, somebody had given me photocopied out of, I think it was White Dwarf Magazine from way back in the 80s when that magazine used to actually cover other games and was good. Uh, and, uh, it was, I think it's a solo Call of Cthulhu game for, like, you know, talking way back when Games Workshop, I believe, was distributing Call of Cthulhu in, in England. Uh, so anyway, um, I found that in a, in a old box recently, so I'm going to kind of try to give that a try coming up. Um, let's see, an interview with Rogue Cthulhu going on. Okay, well, I don't know what that is at all, so I'll have to look into that. Oh, the Arkham Gazette, a magazine for Lovecraft Country. The Cthulhu Roping Magazine. I have not read Arkham Gazette. I think I saw pictures of this once, but I never actually read it. It's interesting. The design reminds me of the old uh, cycle books, but I think that that was sort of one of the Chaosium editions anyway. Had a similar design. Oh, nice! An interview about Harlem Renaissance. I feel like a jerk because I have not picked a copy of that up yet, and I've been meaning to get it since the first edition. 
So that may be something I remedy soon, getting the second edition of that. It's something I've definitely been wanting to check out. Um, and I think it's another book that if I do ever do Masks and Nihilithotep, I think could be woven into that. So I think that would be really uh, definitely something good to, to hold on to. Also, um, he lives near near me, so I thought that was cool. He's like kind of a, uh, for me anyway, local celebrity. Um, let's see. I actually briefly gamed with somebody from uh, one of his game groups, but that's as, that's as close as I've come to meeting him. So, um, let's see. That's ads, I guess. Uh, random tables for chases. Oh, cool. Rooftop hazards, interior hazards, street hazards. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I haven't really done a lot of chases, and I know that that's something, apparently, that um, they've done some updated chase rules that people have said nice things about. Um, I, chases have never really particularly excited me as like a, uh, certainly a, from any kind of a mechanic standpoint, but maybe I need to look into that. Um, you know, I, I guess in, in, in a lot of ways, uh, chase is a pretty important thing in a horror story. So sure. Okay. Well, I'll look into that. I, I've never really done much with Ooh, creepy art. Uh, let's see. A 1968 scenario. Nice. Uh, oh, North Vietnamese. Okay. Um, I don't know if this ties in with some of the uh, Delta Green stuff or with something like Fall of Delta Green. I don't know. I mean, certainly Delta Green was, was in that region, in that era. So uh, I don't know if it connects in or if it's something that would be nice to mix in with that. Or if it's just its own thing, that's fine too. Okay, cool. Looks like we've got quite a bit with this scenario. I like that it does have the, the sort of dual information for Call of Cthulhu or for uh, Trail of Cthulhu. I think that's really cool. Um, that's a nice touch when, you, when you've got a magazine like this. I mean, I, I think anytime, if you've been running games for a while and you're playing games for a while, Honestly, conversion between systems. Once you know a system and you know another system, you you basically know what's going on. But it's also nice to have somebody actually do the work for you so you don't have to put any thought into it. Uh, so you can focus on some other things. Um, ooh, diary. Nice. I imagine that could be a good handout. Okay, maps. Oh. Okay, there's like a comic strip. Oh, Red Hook, okay. Uh, okay, then we have information on the contributors, nice. Um, okay, mostly blank page. But... Okay, well, this looks really interesting. It's pretty inexpensive. It's about, about 79 pages of content. Um, so, nice. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking this out. If you're into Trail of Cthulhu or Call of Cthulhu, or, or just, you know, into the idea of Lovecraftian gaming and Mythos Gaming in general, uh, this looks like a pretty darn cool magazine. So I'm going to give this a read coming up soon. I'll probably have a review on my blog. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll probably have to get the next issue. I believe it is an annual magazine. I think um, this is from maybe three years ago, I think. And I think there's a, a, another two issues after this believe I'm correct on that, but I could definitely be wrong. So, uh, cool. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know. I may try some other uh, unboxings or just looks at some of the books that I, I have, especially some of the books that I've acquired in relatively recent time as I've been trying to get back into the hobby for the first time in a long time. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, you know, the usual YouTube stuff and uh, check out links below and, and yeah, all of that.